Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Sonographers in the Cities. I'm Lynn. And I'm Giselle. Thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs> we are happy that to have you here. Um, I hope you are having a good day. Take and uh, I want to say thank you for taking us on your daily routine. It was a lot of thank you, but we greatly appreciate you. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, we are having a special guest on here for you today. Uh, recently, we've been talking a lot about clinicals and talking about experiences and just a little bit about like lessons learned and things like that. And we have a special guest here. She is a new grad sonographer, and I have actually talked to her for a very long time now. Her name is Unbi, and she's here to talk on behalf of everything she's been through recently. And we are so happy and grateful she's here. So thank you very much for being on the podcast. Hello. Hi. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks Welcome. For here. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about Unbi and everything that she's you know, been through. I actually talked to her back in 2020. She reached out to me and it's two years later and now she's here finally um, graduating. So why don't you, you know, introduce yourself to everyone who's listening and let them know a little bit about yourself. Hello. So my name is Unbi. I am currently working as a echosonographer and a recent grad from LIU. I am from New York. Um, so the program that I was in for um, ultrasounds was in LIU and yeah. Which, what's the program? LIU? LIU, Long Island L- University. LIU. Oh, I don't think. Do we know you know what's funny about LIU? Her school is the reason why I can't get uh, my echo site at one of the one of the sites oh because they contract with yours her school wait 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 no i'm just kidding <laughs> wow. so the program that i'm in um that i was at liu has different specialties mm-hmm. they have abdomen obgyn and echo and vascular yeah mm. oh wow and so they have everything they have a lot of clinical sites that have like linked to that they are able to like have students in the hospitals mm-hmm. as clinical sites. So I think that's why. Well, that's cool. awesome. Were you able to learn all the specialties or did you pick ECHO specifically? So in our program, we have everyone pick all four. Like they don't have a choice, but they need to do clinical sites for all of it. So they are able to sit for the registry for all of the specialties. But Whichever that you want to do more, like you could tell the professor or the director later telling them that you want to, you know, like do echo more. They will let you have more clinical sites for echo or if it's vascular, they will give you more vascular like that. But if you don't say anything, they'll just keep giving you the different like clinical sites. That's amazing that they're yeah. able to like accommodate to their students' interests. Yeah. That's a really good part. Well, so if you get, would you recommend your school then to people who like kind of don't know what they want to do since you get to do all of them? Yes, I think, I mean, it's sometimes difficult for some people to do all of it Mm -hmm. because it's either just abdomen and OB or vascular and echo. But I feel like it's good to experience all of them so that you really know what you want. Mm -hmm. Unless you already know what you want, like in the beginning then I feel like just go for it whatever specialty the school program has so how did you choose um sonography and then echo like how did sonography um so I chose sonography because I really wanted to do healthcare. so before ultrasound was also working at the doctor's office I wanted to do healthcare job wanted to help others I was searching for a job, like healthcare, something that's also quick, but also doable, something that would suit me. And then I just pursued ultrasound. That's cool. Did you do research about like different schools or was like LIU just the one? I researched different schools. Mm -hmm. I wonder if Lynn's school was in your research. (laughs) It was. It was. (laughs) So, So how... 
just really quick, like how did you um, decide on which school you wanted to choose from since you had options? Because I was doing my prerequisites, and I think most schools need a prerequisites at that point. So I chose LIU because it's also a four-year program. And I just thought, like, it might be a good school. So you have a bachelor's. Yeah. Yay, that's so cool. Congratulations. Congratulations. On Thank you. <laughs> it was it's- also exciting, but also very, like, finally. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, dude. Finally. I'm, like, so done. I'm tired. <laughs> You probably like studied so much and I mean bachelors they're usually like very much so like so long and dragged out you're just like yeah oh my gosh because like the two-year programs I know are very fast-paced and like they're very like clumped together whereas like bachelors it's almost spread out a little bit longer yeah are you working now do you did you get a job you know as a new grad yes so I just recently started working Mm -hmm. I'm working at Mount Sinai mm-hmm. as an echocardiographer. Nice. Congratulations on your new job. Thank it's so you. recent after your graduation, too. Yeah. For those who don't know, she literally just graduated yeah. last month. Literally a month ago. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. That's so exciting. Did you do clinicals there at Mount Sinai or somewhere else? Um, so I did my clinical site. That was the hospital that I'm working right now. I did my clinical rotation at, but it was a different department. But I wanted to, I like the clinical site a lot. And I really like the hospital, the work environment. I like the hospital itself. It's yeah. nice. Did you get a chance to rotate in, in, into like a outpatient setting? Yeah, I did. I did. It was outpatient. And you like, out, you like hospital better? Um, I rotated in both inpatient and outpatient clinical mm-hmm. uh, rotations and I like outpatient a lot more mm-hmm. than inpatients because inpatients there's like the big like the scrollers you need to bring that in and out and it's just really heavy and then sometimes like inpatients they can't even move I feel like it's just a lot more workload mm-hmm. outpatient mm-hmm. but also inpatients are very good too I like inpatients also but it's just they have like their pros and cons yeah, I think inpatients are probably more challenging yeah. types of exams. Um, but in your experience, since you know you've only really been working new, like newly fresh, fresh out the oven, um, well, what would you say is like been the most challenging aspect so far about so everything? Far, I feel like it's just a lot more than just being a student. I feel like it's like you have to really it's like I'm working so I need to really be working having my own patience so that part is more difficult mm-hmm. and I have to do the full study the reports it's just a little more different more tiring mm-hmm. more work on you yeah, more work yeah you don't have a preceptor or mentor holding your hand anymore mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> you have responsibilities now yeah it's like the preceptors or the mentors are all like, oh, you know, just take a rest, like, you know, go, you know. But now it's like, if I'm <laughs> no just sitting rest. there, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no more rest for you. I do remember that as a student, like, you know, they, you, you're obviously a student, so they, it's a little bit different from when you actually have the sonographer's duties and responsibilities. It's like, you're like, you know, leveling up, you know? Yeah. That's exciting though. I'm I'm glad that you are you got a job right away. That's really cool. Thank you. Like what's been the best part since graduating? The best part, I would say passing my registry. Yay. Yeah. That's a good one. Working. Mm-hmm. So your registry that you passed was cardiac, correct? Yes. And Lynn's doing cardiac. Do you have any questions for her? <laughs> so how was the uh the registry for cardiac like was it easy was it hard because I've heard a lot of people saying oh echo is really easy yeah same for me when I asked someone I remember I asked them was echo easy or hard and they were like echo is so easy for the test I guess I guess I found it kind of easy because I studied but I guess from what I heard from people them saying that it was so easy it wasn't that easy Okay, so for you, it was harder than what people were saying. 
Yeah. I see. But at least you passed and now you have a job. Yeah. So that's super exciting. I also wanted to ask you um, as a new grad and um, how was the job finding experience for you or job searching? Like, was it easy? How was or I feel like a sonographers right now, the job is not that difficult to find. And I feel like just apply as much as you can for the jobs and you'll get a job, even as a new grad. For me, it wasn't difficult. So for this job, did you like use your connections during clinicals? Or um, did you just apply and they respond to you? So this one was easier for me because my school professor was saying that there was a job opening at this location. And then I found out that it was the same hospital that I did my clinical rotation. So I was like, oh, you know, why not? Yeah. So I guess in that sense, it was more easier. It's all about connections. Connections and networking and I mean, when people tell me they have a hard time finding a job as a new grad, it's definitely probably hard because of the networking and connections that they they don't have. Because mm-hmm. um, if you don't want to work at your clinical site, then, you know, or you can't work at your clinical site, you have to find somewhere else to work, obviously. Yeah. Because um, most clinical sites are like places that you can potentially work at. Yeah. So you know, it's good that you've got that connection. Um, And I think it's really important for everyone to know, like, there are a lot of jobs out there. And there's some people who are being told that there aren't that many jobs out there. And there are a lot. And sometimes you have to look somewhere else, somewhere further out, somewhere in another city or state, but there are plenty of ultrasound jobs out there right now. So I just wanted to put that out there because I've had a few people comment on my YouTube videos saying that there's a few people saying that they shouldn't go into ultrasound because there's no jobs, but I'm like, there's a ton of jobs. So just got to look at the right places and depending on the cities too, though, because like some places are saturated. I understand that, but like, look at New York, like you guys are in New York and they're hiring so much, like, and there's a lot of students out there too. So, I mean, what do you guys have to say about that? Um, I feel like with sonography as um, students in the clinical site, working in the clinical sites, it's really, it's it's a good connection, but sometimes it's like, you might not like it there. And it's not always like the people, the employers over there is not always like, oh, you should work here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it's good experience, but it's, it's just, sometimes there's just not, that much of a like working like oh yeah you should work here and I'll work here there's not like that much of kind of stuff there like mutual like mutual hey I want to work here you want me to work here let's let's do this yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah, I guess it yeah because it's a little different out here in Vegas it's very much so like that Um, oh really yeah everybody that gets in their clinicals they usually get hired from their clinical sites Oh, really? And it's a very, um, I don't know, our program out here is very small. So, and and we're in, in dire need of sonographers. So that's why it's very easy out here. But that's why it depends on location and where people are, are living, you know. But that, that also makes sense because if you don't want to work there, then, you know, wh- how, how would they give you connections? Yeah. So, but then, you know, ask nicely, like, hey, do you know anyone around town yeah. that's hiring, you know? <laughs> but it's really all about connections and networking. Yeah. Like the clinical size that um, sonography students rotate at is a potential job. And I feel like mm-hmm. that person, the workers there, the managers will have, like, will know how you are, mm-hmm. how much good of a person like good of a student you are and they will tell other people mm-hmm. so exactly. like word of mouth almost you know and and you leave behind like a footprint right so they know your experience as a student they're like oh she was a good student she's going to be a good sonographer one day and they'll they'll just like any job when you have to ask for a referral 
or a reference, right? And you want to be able to put them down as your reference. The, the best thing to do is to be the best in clinicals because for, for me, for example, like I would want to hire someone that I just trained for a whole entire, who knows how long you're there. I, if, you, if you're good, like obviously I want to keep you because I'm training you and I want to keep you here. And that's kind of the mindset, I think, for a lot of um, clinical sites and sonographers. So, I mean, sounds like then, did you have a really good clinical experience? Like, how was that? I did. It was difficult at times, but also I had a good clinical experience because I was able to rotate at different hospitals, both inpatient and outpatient. So I learned how to, how each like different hospitals are and how like sonographers should work and the workflow. Like, it made me understand like which one I like working in more to choose one, like if it's in patients or outpatients in that kind of sense. Mm-hmm. What was your um, like most memorable moment in clinicals? Do you have any of those? The most memorable? Mm-hmm. Or any like cases that you've seen, any patient interactions that you know, stands out to you? I feel like there was so many interesting cases for like general, I would say for like, I mean, there was a very sad situation when mm-hmm. I was in an OBGYN site. The patient had a miscarriage. Mm-hmm. So I was able to like deal and see like, how the doctor tells the patient about the situation and then just how the patient grieves about it and all that. So that was very memorable. Yeah. That's very interesting. Like, I feel like all students should learn or like go through it or witness it. Yeah. Because I I haven't seen any of that and I don't know how I'm going to react to it if it ever happens to me, you know? So it's... Yeah, and a lot of us see that every day. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it starts to get kind of like, you do have all these memorable cases and, and scans that kind of like, they stay with you because of the conversation you have with the patient or whatever happens. Like I did post a video about like one of the hardest exams I had ever done and it had to do with a miscarriage too. So yeah, those are definitely hard. And like a lot of times people think what we have is easy. Like our job is easy and that, it's easy peasy and so fun and all this stuff, but there's still a lot of hard days. Do you have any, like, what's your biggest, like, takeaway or lesson from everything that you've been through? I would say just do your best as a student, just do your best and you will reach your goals and be successful. Because it's difficult to be a student. It's difficult to be in the program and it's just a lot of work. Like people think that sonography might be an easy program, but it really isn't that easy. So just don't give up and do your best. So that ties in with our last question is uh, what advice or suggestions you have for current sonography students and um, prospective students. Do you have any other um, advices, comments that you'd like to share with us? or share with our listeners yeah something you want to let them know now that you're on the other side (laughs) I would say again do your best in all your classes (laughs) and your clinical sites and do your best y'all she said it here first yeah (laughs) practice makes perfect Mm -hmm. that's a good one comes down to that yeah like practice 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 you're not going to get better unless you practice and you are just in your one month of past graduating. So I know that you're still, you still have a lot to learn and you're going to, you know, you're going to have a lot of roadblocks and you're going to have a lot of challenges. Um, it's just the beginning for you, but also end of a chapter, no more school. And now you're, you're a real sonographer. So congratulations. Yes. Thank congratulations, you. Jumbi. We're so happy for you. <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you yeah we appreciate you coming on and you know just sharing some of your experience and some of your advice it's really helpful for them to know that you know it is possible to get hired as a new grad all they got to do is like you said is apply 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 and you know try to just keep bugging them 
Hello. Networking. <laughs> Thank you for having me, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for your time and your insightful advices. <laughs> Yes, we appreciate it. And for those of you guys who are listening, you know, let us know if there's anything else you want to hear or you want us to talk about. And of course, we will get those on our podcast. So thank you. Don't forget to rate us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Yeah. Yes, thank you. And your questions. So next episode is our monthly Q&A. So don't forget to tune in on next week's episode. Yeah, because we're going to answer lots of questions. So once again, thank you, Unbi. And we'll see you guys and talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.